guys, it's Danielle over at DIYDanielle.com and today I'm here to show you how to change your guinea pig um, or clean your guinea pig cage. So this is specifically if you have fleece, I don't really use um, paper bedding or any other type of bedding except in their litter box. Um, so I wanted to show you how to do this because a lot of the issue with fleece is people don't know how to care for it and they don't know how to use it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is my fleece liners. People do different things with fleece. Mine are sewn together. I sew, so it made sense for me to sew my own. Um, yes, so a lot of people will get just, um, there's a certain kind of fleece you have to get that will wick moisture. And what that means is the, um, the type of fabric will make the moisture go through it instead of sitting on top of it. Some fabrics moisture will sit on top of so you could see it beading up here other fabrics the kind you want for the top are going to go through now I have two kinds of fleece for this liner that I made here this fleece is the kind that repels um, repels any sort of fluid so this would beat up on it so that's on the bottom and this wicks fluid so that means it's on the top and what I have in between is I have towels. So any pea soaks into that. Now this isn't perfect. It will leak through to the bottom of the cage if I, um, if I um, leave it for too long. But for the most part, it does work. And the area where they wet the most, I added a litter box. So we have a little um, casserole dish actually that I had extra and that has bedding in it and they can pee in there and I swap that out pretty much every day or every two days depending on how wet it is. So again this has um, an old towel in the middle and then it has um, a fleece to wick on the top. So if you were, um, were not able to sew a lot of people will take the fleece that wicks put it on the top and then they'll just lay towels at the bottom of their cage underneath it and that works fine too. The only thing is, is that we have a Midwest cage and it comes with a fabric bottom. So we wanted to make sure that that wouldn't leak through. So I wanted to have as much to prevent um, stuff from leaking through to the floor as I could. Um, one solution to that is just to put something on the bottom of your cage to prevent that. This liner here uses something called PUL on the bottom. PUL is polyurethane laminate. It is a waterproof type fabric it's not 100% waterproof anything will go through any fabric if well maybe not some plastics but for fabric usually wet stuff will go through if it's bad enough but um these are used for um, cloth diapers and it prevents most liquid from going through if something's sopping wet like if I spill the whole thing of water on here it would go through but for the most part it prevents um, any fluids from going through to the to the cage bottom. Now, let me show you how I clean my cage. So, one of the things I keep here is I keep a big container of poop. Yeah, that's gross, right? So, um, this is all our dirty bedding, all the guinea pig poop and excess hay that will get composted. We have a compost bin and it goes in there um, because we will eventually use it in the garden once it's broken down. So, when I'm cleaning, that's the first thing I do is I want to take their their litter box area and I'm going to clean that out and I'm just going to empty it in here and I empty out the um, empty this out into the compost bin as it fills up I did buy a little dustpan and a little brush and it works really well except for I broke the handle because I was too rough. So for the most part I just scrape this out. It's not perfectly clean on the bottom but um, I usually just keep it like that and then you know once a week or so I'll clean it like really really well. Um, so I'm just gonna put clean bedding in here in my litter box area and again when you're litter box training I have some information on my blog about it but when you're litter box training guinea pigs 
I don't know. I'm, I'm not like the foremost expert in guinea pigs, but from what I understood is you're pretty much trying to catch the areas they pee in the most. You're not necessarily really training them like that. Um, again, somebody may tell me I'm wrong and that they tra train their guinea pig and they never poop anywhere, but I think it's bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. They, they poop all the time, and I don't think they have control over where they're going, so I think they just do what they're going to do. But because they're in their food area so much, they're more likely to pee and poop in that area. So that's the area that you'd add this to. I am going to keep this to the side because it's now ready for me to put back in. Um, dirty water, I will empty into my compost stuff, and then I will clean this out and refill it. Their food dish, same thing, emptying it out, clean it out, refill Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking out all of their accessories in their cage. I have, um, if you have any sort of containers that might get poop in them, you want to empty that out. This is actually going to go through the wash. I want to make sure I um, get all the poop out. This is a... Uh, cozy cup I guess but it's it's a big one and this is for my sons to hold them so that they don't scare them too badly picking them up what you do is you get them into the little bag and then you just pick them up in the bag and you can pat them through it it works really well for kids um, so I've got this police forest here that I made I don't know if it'll be up in my blog when I share this post but um, eventually it'll get up but I made a fleece forest. They love it. They love being in areas they feel safe and cozy. So I have three liners in here right now. Um, usually I have one big one and then one small one that I keep again in the heavily heavy soiling area. But um, these are two liners that I made when my cage setup was a little different. So I am just going to take out the small one and shake it out right in here. The one thing is, is when you're washing your fleece, you don't want tons of like hay and stuff going through your washing machine. It won't process properly. Like it's going to still be there. You definitely don't want guinea pig poop in there. So your machine's not going to break down anything that's not organic. So your machine will wash out blood. It'll wash out pee and it'll wash out like, you know, some stuff, but it's got to be like, I want to say it's going to be organic because poop's organic and it won't it won't wash out poop i mean poops is solid <laughs> poops is solid um so you just want to be careful otherwise you'll have a lot of stuff in your in your uh thing so i just brush it off real quick it's not a big deal you can shake it out outside um not a huge issue i made this thing because my liner shrunk and i didn't want them burrowing underneath it They're like petrified of me picking them up normally, but the minute I'm trying to clean, they're like up in my business. It's just how they, how they roll. So for fleece liners, I'm usually changing these out every two days, sometimes every three days. But what I'm looking for is I'm just making sure when I check every night, I just make sure it's not, the pee isn't wetting through to the bottom of the cage. That's all I'm checking for. I just wanna make sure they're not soaked. So I'm swapping this out. It's been a couple days. Usually if it's been a couple days, we're good. And it depends too. Like this is a fairly good size cage. It's about the size you want for two guinea pigs. It's probably, ideally you'd have bigger, of course, because, you know, they're living animals. And the more the merrier, I guess. But uh, this is like the size you'd normally have. If you had a really small cage, which some people have really small cages for their guinea pigs, You'd obviously need to change more often because it's same amount of pee, less area. Okay. So again, I'm just brushing it off. This would be super easy to shake off, but I, um, our washing machine and our guinea pigs are all upstairs on the main level of the house or the top level. And to go outside and shake it off would actually be more work. So this is not a big deal for me. And again, you're just mostly getting the big pieces. You just don't want tons and tons of hay going through your washing machine. And no poop. No poop goes through your washing machine, trust me. You do not want to do that. Hi, friend. Aw, hey, friend. You're so cute. 
cute. These are lovey and dovey. These are the guinea pigs that my son said they would care for. And we knew, I mean, I knew they're four and six. They're not super responsible and they do help every day, but they're not doing most of the work I am, which is fine. Cause I really wanted guinea pigs. <laughs> Let's be honest. I really wanted some little friends. And we're just going to brush this up. As you can see, we now have an empty cage. I need to not have an empty cage because if they start peeing, it's going to go everywhere. So the first thing I want to do is sweep or vacuum out any extra stuff on um, hay and poop being the main ones. Hay does get caught in this a lot, um, so it would be a lot easier for me to, um, this is, um, this vacuum is exclusively for this. I uh, don't use it for anything else. So you can just sweep up some if you want. None of this really worries me. There's no more poop in here. So the one thing I do also do, um, and this is optional, but if you notice any white spots on here, that's areas that the wet got through. I take vinegar and I think there might be some water in this, um, vinegar and water mix. And I take a wet cloth, a rag, and I just wipe down those areas. I do try to make sure that if there's any spots that I wipe them out. So here's our big liner. Again, this is the side that wicks. This is the side that is supposed to prevent stuff from leaking through. And I put it right there, preferably under the guinea pig and not over them. Just a little bit bigger than my cage width, which is good because then I can um, kind of fold it up against the wall of the cage, which keeps them for poops from going over the edge. For the most part, it's not perfect. So now that that's clean, I'm going to put this back in. This is an upcycled cake pan. I actually have, um, that's what I put their hay in. So I'm actually gonna sweep this out into the, um, into this here. And the reason I'm doing that is because they've probably pooped in here and I wanna just clean out all the hay and put fresh hay in. Eventually I'll just toss this, this is only, you know, I've only had this in here a week. I have a fabric one that I use most of the time. I have a second one that I do put down usually underneath the litter box area um, and really under like the whole food area. That way if any water or anything spills or if they, they'll probably pee more in that area that it um, doesn't go through. It just gives me something that I can sh change out more frequently. So I change these small pads out a lot more frequently than I change out the big pads. And here we have our rock. And now all I need to do is go clean up my food in my water dish and add those back into the cage. Um, I put my lid back in there and with the lid on, you don't smell it. The minute you take it off, it hits you in the face like a truck. But um, with the lid on, it doesn't cause any problems. And again, I empty this maybe like every week. Um, and at the bottom, it's always good um, every time you empty it to put some baking soda. Um, but for the most part, it's actually not bad because of all the paper bedding. It, um, I know we use mostly fleece, but because the paper bedding is still being used in the litter box area, it seems to kind of balance it all out. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, the other thing is I keep something called a wet bag and it's something I use for my, my kids because we cloth diaper as well. We have a wet bag that we keep all of our guinea pig fleece in. And I do one big load of guinea pig fleece per um, per week. And this works out really well. And what I do is I start my wash by doing one rinse wash. I have a rinse on cold. And that rinses all of the liners. And then I put it through a second time with detergent this time. It's got to be detergent that won't cause repelling. Um, certain detergents that have extra stuff added to them 
are going to cause your fleece to not absorb anymore or your towels to not absorb. You don't want to use that. You want to use something that's a free and clear. And if you really want to make sure your detergent's the right one on the list, make sure to check out Cloth Safe. If you do a Google search for Cloth Safe um, detergents or Cloth Diaper Safe um, laundry detergent, you will find a huge list of what's right and what's wrong. Um, so I wash these once a week, and the second wash is on hot, and it's a heavy wash, and um, I just make sure that it does a good job, and then I usually will um, clean out my washing machine after because I'm particular. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Make sure to check out the tutorial on DIYDanielle.com. Okay guys, we have clean water dish that I put back in here. We've got our clean and dry uh, food container that I'm putting food in. And just for, if you're new to guinea pigs, I just wanted to point out a couple things. We have um, regular pellets. You do not want anything fancy mixed in. They sell them, but they're not as good for them. Not only that, but they have these. My guinea pigs were picking out the other like fancy stuff and only eating the pellets. So you'll save yourself a lot of money if you just buy pellets. It's supposed to be healthier for them. The other thing you wanna make sure you have, you wanna make sure you have plenty of hay. I haven't put hay in here yet. I've got it right here. And ideally, it's good to pick up some good quality hay. This is Timothy hay I ordered off um, Amazon. I had some hay before and uh, it's what the, the stuff I had before is what the pet store carries. And it was really, really dusty and it had my allergies going nuts every time I uh, clean their cage. And um, there's apparently no need for that because this hay is amazing and it doesn't have dust and it's so much easier to work with. Um, the one that I was buying in the bag had like these little teeny pieces and it was like kind of powdery. It was, especially at the bottom of the bag, it was gross. This is like nice and long. The only issue is it comes compressed in this box and there's there's a ton in here. Like it just, it, it's a little bit of a pain, but it's not as much of a pain as having hay everywhere. And I don't have to take a shower after, which is amazing. Um, because I do have allergies, allergies to hay and dust and mold. I, I guess not hay so much as the dust in it, but. So hay is one of the most, or the most important thing that guinea pigs need to survive. If you don't feed your guinea pig the right things, you're going to end up at the vet. So make sure that you understand what they're supposed to eat. They have certain, um, you're really supposed to feed them fresh fruits and vegetables as well. This is like having extra children, trust me. Um, but they're so cute. And um, they need lots of hay. That's going to be the most, most of their food. And then um, they need their pellets, and then they also need some fresh fruits and vegetables, like I said. Um, you need to make sure you don't feed the wrong ones. Certain things like carrots, they can't have too much of. Part of that has to do with sugar content. Part of that has to do with um, what kind of chemical, <laughs> chemical I guess, um, what kind of nutrients make up each one. Too much of some nutrients is bad for them. So if they have a lot of carrots at once, it's not good for them. I don't think probably like it's gonna hurt them one time. But um, long term, they, there can be some issues if you do that long term, I'm sure. Um, the main problem is just like all the, all the things you see people bring their guinea pigs in for, for when they're sick, have to do, like a lot of times it does have to do with being given the wrong foods, I think. Um, you have to worry about stuff like urinary tract infections and stuff like that. And I think that's, I think if I recall that that can be caused by too much of certain certain nutrients. So again, you want to have a little bit of a balance. So I have some fresh fruits and vegetables I'm going to add to their cage as well. And um, they're clean for today. I'm going to fix their, I'm going to fix it, this thing here. And they love these fleece forests. They love a place to hide. Ideally, I would have this above their litter box because they like to poop and pee where it's, um, where, where, where predators won't get them. But um, I didn't like it dragging in the litter boxes. Um, so yeah, the last thing I'm just going to do is vacuum up all the stuff that gets everywhere because usually when I'm 
cleaning up I do make a little bit of a mess and uh, I hope that was helpful if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment I'm also going to put some information on my blog post about this um, I want to make people really aware of how easy fleece is I know a lot of people love using paper bedding but it's expensive it's really expensive not only that but it creates waste and it creates something extra to throw out um, which I like having a little bit of it because it composts well with the poop um, so I like doing the, um, the litter box and just having a little bit, but I wouldn't want to be paying, buying this every time. For the size of this cage, I think I would be using like one of these a week, one big bag, and then not that cheap to do. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I, I only use paper like for the full cage when we have a pet sitter watching. Um, so I could be wrong there, but um, it seems like you'd have to use an awful lot and it's fairly pricey. Um, not only that, but they kick it out of the cage and it gets everywhere and it drives me nuts. So even though we have a little bit of mess around here, usually it's my mess from when I'm cleaning it up and make a mess. Um, so for the most part, the fleece can't be kicked out, which is nice. So they do kick bedding out on this side a little, um, and hay does fall out on this side a little, but otherwise it's pretty, pretty clean. Um, uh, ideally I'd eventually like to make something that, um, goes around two sides of their cage so that way um, it keeps anything from being kicked out. I want to put something on wheels to go underneath it. It'd be really awesome, but I haven't got to it. It's, it's, it's in the works. It's a thought. So that's all there is. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Oh, um, make sure again, check out the post on DIYDanielle.com if you're not there already. And yes, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I try to do some guinea pig stuff. I I like playing them a little, and I do some pet, other pet stuff, like dog stuff, occasionally as well. Alrighty, thanks. Have a good one.